This is Power World, or Pokemon with guns. From running a factory, to fighting huge bosses, to capturing literal humans, basically a game that does it all. And it surprisingly does it pretty well. And for the next 24 hours, I'm going to be playing it on the hardest difficulty. And with the game just releasing, I had no idea what I was getting into. The first hour, I learned what this game was really about. I created the Shiny's question mark world on hard mode and created my character Shiny Water. The character customization seems very inspired by Ark, and afterwards, I finally load into the game. My end goal was to get a gun and shoot some pals, but that was a long ways away. As soon as I spawned in, I immediately went the opposite direction, thinking I would get some loot. You know, open world. I found some journals which I would never read, and my first pal spears. Yeah, that's what they're called. I'm not kidding. Afterwards, I started punching a tree to get some wood, but I was immediately distracted by my first pal, a lamb ball. I went for a level three one. Yeah, lamb ball, you're mine. Oh, oh my god. Oh no. Is it... Yo, oh, chill. I'm gonna die. Fortnite building. Oh, look at that. What am I doing? I'm building. Tactical level up. Get the smoke. I'm critting him. Yeah, the starting pals two-shotting me wasn't a good sign of what was to come. And with all my items dropping upon death, I had to make my way back. I continued collecting more resources and decided to make a club to get my revenge on the land ball. Oh yeah. Oh my, I do so much more damage. All right. What the? Did I just lose it? Yeah, you have to lower the pals, but not kill them to catch them, just like Pokemon. But that didn't stop me from going for another one. Oh, yeah. My first catch. <laughs> Lamb Ball, what's up? Okay, he has the ability Fluffy Shield. Let's take up a gander at that. I use him as a human shit. That's not really an ability. <laughs> After discovering every pal is a unique ability, I found an egg which I won't be able to hatch until later into the video. But after my recent success, I decided to face a level 14 pal. Get it, Lamb Ball. All right. What is it doing? Holy sh- Yeah, that didn't work. After getting my items again, I finally made a pickaxe and collected more palladium fragments to make more pal spheres. If I was gonna get stronger, I needed way more resources and pals to fight. I caught a chickpea and tested my luck with a hookertes and found out how much I need a base to actually stay safe. I finally decided to put my skill points into stamina and attack and made my way across the map. I finally built the very start of my base. Every base starts with a pal box, which allows you to store, assign, and heal your pals. I still needed resources to make more of the base, so I started collecting. But as I was happening, I saw it. Oh my god, man Morris, level 35? I was way too weak right now to catch it, but I knew later this grass mammal swine was something I wanted. But in the meantime, I was catching more new pals. Alright, should be low enough. Ow, 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 chill, chill. Alright, new pal, Cativa. What is that? A Gumas. Alright, come on. After catching Gumas, I continued catching more pals because I not only had a tutorial quest for it, but it also gave me a lot of experience. You see, the first 10 catches of single pal gives an experience boost, and in my opinion, this is the best way to level up. I then started working even more on my base, making a chest, a campfire, foundations, and walls. And after that, I used my level ups on more stamina. And starting the next hour, I had some uh, new experiences at the base but also continued to improve it. And I did that until I saw a brand new pal. What is that? Pinglet! Pingulet! We captured a human yet? No, not yet. I need th whatever this is though. I want a pingulet. Come on, pingulet. Pingulet, all right. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, we got it. Pingulet was 
pretty cool, and after I did some exploring, I found a Lift Monk effigy, and also some skill fruits. The effigy can be used a little later, and the skill fruits can teach my pals brand new moves. And once I got back to my base, I made some pal beds. These are required for every pal you have working at your base, and the number of pals that can work at your base is determined by your base level, which can be upgraded after doing certain tasks. And while I was collecting resources, I continued to level up. Also, I made cloth armor and even more beds for my pals. My base was starting to actually shape up, and with more resources, I decided to catch a new pal. Eighty-five. 99, let's go. After catching Daydream, I made a shield, which regenerates after some time, and it helped not getting one shot from high level pals. Back at my base, I created a feed box and a berry plantation so my pals won't starve. And I also haven't really explained it yet, but each pal has certain skills that can be used around the base. For example, the goo moss I caught earlier can be used to plant berries and other crops. That's why I decided to catch more pals so I can always have someone working at the base. But after letting someone join my guild, they led a dangerous pal to the base. Oh god! Oh. Oh my god. No! It's a massacre! Zero percent! My whole- my everyone! Oh my! Retreat! Retreat! After retreating, I made a statue of power and it allowed me to enhance my capture power with the Lift Monk effigies I got earlier. And I haven't said it yet, but this game is actually really fun. But yeah, it does have some bugs. What's the- are you just- Yeah, that one happens quite a lot. And after that, I decided to go out and catch some more pals. Should I get the Hookertees? Oh yeah, we got this guy. Hookertees. And after wandering around more, I had to try something that I can't believe is in this game. Oh my... 10% catch rate. Oh my god, he's attacking him. Oh. He gave me some coins. I wasn't able to get him now, but that won't stop me from trying in the future. I did, however, run out of pal spears, so when I went back to upgrading the base, I made a new logging site that will generate a near infinite supply of wood and also made some more pal spears to start hunting. And at this time, I found a very important pal. Wait, what is that? Melpaka? One sec. I need whatever this is. All right, 60, 70, 80. Oh, yes. Yo, can I ride this? Later, I found out that I can unlock a saddle for Melpaka. I just need to get the resources. But before that, I decided to capture other pals with little success. What is that? No, I died. Oh, oh crap. Oh, crap. Melpaka. Go. I got one shot. Oh, they took my shield. Oh, crap. It got out. It got out. But what I didn't know is that wild pals don't recover their HP sometimes. Dude, screw this thing. Wait, it's like one HP. Yo! Let's go! That was a pretty lucky catch, and after that, I made my way back to base. Little did I know, something was waiting for me. To Toko implode unit is invading the base? Oh yeah, I'm catching these guys. Oh yeah. It's a bomb! Oh, I got it. Let's go! That raid was pretty easy and nothing compared to the dark raid of Outer 18. But that aside, after surviving the raid, I was kind of just figuring out how the task system worked and learned that the deer I just caught was really good at chopping wood. And along with that, I made a stone pit, which is the stone equivalent to the logging site. And next, I mined some palladium fragments in order to make a milpaca saddle. And yeah, it was worth it. Yo! Alright. Fluffy tackle. Wait, as air cannon? Yo, let's go. This mount not only lets me get to places faster, but also lets me control the attacks, making it much easier to catch new pals. Hey. 
All right, got it. And after catching some new pals, I made a crusher. This will become an invaluable tool that takes stone and turns it into pouting fragments. And while I was collecting more resources, I found the Tower of Rain Syndicate, which was a boss battle that I really want to do. My friend from earlier wanted to do it as well, so we fought it together. Oh, what? Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah, it's that guy. All right, there's two of us. We should be able to do this, right? Oh, crap. Okay, that thing was strong. That thing was strong. Yeah, we were a bit underleveled. And even if we didn't die, we wouldn't be able to do enough damage in the time limit. And putting the game in hard difficulty was really starting to show in these HP numbers. So I decided to hold it off till later. After the defeat, I made a Daydream's Necklace. Normally, you're only allowed to have one pal at a time, but with this item, you can have Daydream out and attack pals when close. I also made a ranch, which produces random resources based on what pal can stay in there. For example, Land Ball produces wool, which was nice, but for right now, I needed to level up. So I decided to catch more pals, and I caught my first Lift Monk. It was strange. It's happening. These guys are glitched, bro. <laughs> They're like in the tree, but I could just... No way. All right, lift monk. All right, we got it. And I continue to capture more new pals. Oh my God, new guys, spark it and rush shore. All right, we got it. Oh, this guy. Alright, it was like solo. Dang, you instant throw those. Alright, got it. And these catches were vital in order to progress, because I needed to level up to unlock technology. Every level you gain lets you unlock new technology that you can make. This technology unlocks different mechanics and is also needed for tasks to upgrade your base. One of these tasks was a hot spring, which required an item drop from some water pals. So I started looking around, and also caught a couple new guys along the way. What is- oh yeah, it's the flak. I want it. Oh, it's another flak right here. Oh, I got the flak. Let's go. You also drop pal fluids. Oh, shoot. When I got back to base, I made a primitive furnace, which can be used to smelt ore into ingots, and I also made some pal spears. I still didn't have enough pal fluids, so I went back out and caught a tansy, which reminds me a lot of pansage, and I also caught a t-font. I eventually ended up back at the base where I finally made the hot spring. Also, the purpose of the hot spring is to make my pals happier, and I guess they deserve that much for working for me forever. Anyways, uh, this build let me upgrade my base level 8. After that, I just kept hunting for our pals, and found a jolt hog, which I will use a lot more later. But after that, I found a not so abandoned mineshaft, where I found a journal, and a black marketer. I trade in any kind of pal, whether it's stolen pals or even prohibited types. This guy has a rotating shop of pals and I didn't buy any yet because I was a little broke, but I will later. You are able to sell some pals too, but I just kept the ones I have for now. And while I was still out, I caught a bunch of old and new pals. Dire Howl, Cell Array, and a Capri. And also as I was doing this, I leveled up to level 11 and level 12. After this began the long journey of collecting ore for ingots. Ingots are used for so many things in technology, including the guns that I'm trying to get in this video. But before that, I made a medicine workbench that I never used like at all. But that was fine because something that I was trying to do since the start of the game finally happened. Come on. Oh, let's look at his gun in there. Oh, oh. We got it! I probably shouldn't have been that excited for that, but that was pretty crazy. And while I was at it, I rescued another pal, Daisy. You see, there are many different human camps around the world that are guarding a pal that they captured. And honestly, they're pretty easy, and half the time they're bugged, but they gave it a free pal. Anyways, I did want to try out my new friend. Okay. I just have a guy with a gun. Yeah, so I can just tell him to, to shoot people. Uh... Hey, can you shoot him? Oh, what about him? You shoot him? 
he's just doing like a dive attack. Yeah, he didn't really use his gun. But after that, I decided to expand my base a little bit and made a high quality workbench, which allowed me to upgrade my base to level 9. Anyways, I went to the Black Marketer because I wanted to sell my human because I heard they sell for a lot. Actually, I can't believe I just wrote that sentence. Uh, anyways, I checked the market and nothing was really jumping out at me, but I did sell some of the duplicate pals I didn't want. Also, I want to point out a big member of the team right now, Jolt Hog. I made her pal accessory and it lets me pick her up and chuck her for a huge electric bomb attack, which I use quite a lot for some initial burst damage. After that, I just kept exploring new areas, catching things as I went. I was able to get some more Lift Monk Evigies and leveled up all the way to level 14. As I was exploring, I found a small settlement, which had some stuff. It was kind of scuffed, but there was a pal trader, which was cool, but he didn't sell anything much of interest. I did take the time to sell a bunch of the guys I just caught though. Anyways, I was back at the base and I unlocked the second tier Pal Spears, which was pretty cool. Too bad they cost an ingot per ball, but later I automate this, kinda. Anyways, me and my friend tried fighting Rain Tower again and lost somehow. I blame him, he was only level 5. And yeah, I'm not sure if the boss scales with players, but I still blame him. But hey, at least it was closer this time. After the defeat, I continued to do the powered cycle of getting resources and pals, which was fun. But hey, I haven't done a base tour all this time, so I'll let past me do it. Yeah, I got, dude, I have a whole working operation going right now. This, uh, ether deer, you know, getting the wood. I have some boars getting the stone. These water guys, they put water on the, this, like, windmill here, you know, make some resources. Grass, the grass guys, you know, they plant in. Got a little ranch to collect resources from some of these guys. Yeah, probably a 4 out of 10 base tour, to be honest. I didn't even show the inside of the house. But I had bigger things to worry about. And by that, I meant dying again. Man, I keep overestimating myself. Anyways, I just kept catching stuff. You know, I needed my level increase. And that eventually led me to making a sphere workbench, which allows me to make the higher tier spears I was talking about earlier. Also, at this time, I caught my first depresso. I don't know why it took me so long to catch one of these guys, but I got one. And a little later, I finally faced my first field boss. Chill it. Sorry, bud. <laughs> These are just bosses scattered throughout the map that are just really big pals that are pretty powerful. I use the Valiant strategy of hiding behind a rock and laying my pals at him. I'll camp you, bro. Oh my god, it just broke my shield. Oh, went up. Oh, I hit it with a good one. 55. Yes. Oops. I did try catching him, but honestly got pretty unlucky. However, I did get some ancient technology parts and points. These can be used to make some pretty good items like an egg incubator and even better shields later on. Also at my base, I made a monitoring stand, which you can guide your pals with, but I didn't ever use it. And it was lost in the dark raid of hour 18 anyway. Anyways, I also made a small feedback. This automatically feeds myself and my pals if I have food in this slot. But afterwards, I received an important message. My friend said he had a shiny pal, so I had to check it out. Wait, where you at? I'll go to you. Let me see this. It's really big. Wait, it is shiny. Look at it has a sh it has a shiny symbol next to it. Let me get a rush ore out and see if it's different. It's not shiny in any way. It's the exact same. It's just really big. I think it's huge. You should get a saddle so you can ride that. It's really crazy. The shiny symbol looks the exact same as Pokemon. This kind of pal is kind of like an alpha Pokemon where the pal is just really big. The game calls these pals lucky pals and I get some more later. So we'll be able to see what they do then. But another feature is that the pal has really good traits. Most pals in this game have a trait linked to it, which do certain things. This can range from doing more damage to just being flat out lazy when working. After that though, I wanted to fight in our boss. And this was one of my favorite pals in the game. Oh my gosh, they're sleeping. <laughs> Alright. That's a good way to start it. Oh, I did so much. Dazzy. Get him. Oh my god. 2% catch rate? Okay. 12%? 15? No. Oh shoot, my shield. <gasps> Wait, 47? 
Let's go. Let's go. The best part of catching these boss pals is that they retain their size. I feel like in most games, when you catch or have a boss on your team, they just feel so much weaker than they should. But whenever I used Pen King, he felt really strong. Anyways, when I got back to base, I made a mill, which produces wheat, and an egg incubator, which can finally hatch the eggs I've been slowly collecting. Too bad it took 24 hours, which is fine, but you know, it's a 24 hour video. I do end up hatching an egg later, and even this one went down with the correct environment, but honestly, when it hatches, it's not that cool. After that, I went in a mini dungeon, and they had a lot of new pals. Look are these guys, a little fuddler. <laughs> Got it. Fuddler. Kill Amari. What's that? I want it. Come on. Yes. Level up too. Oh. Oh! I got one! I got a thug. Oh, new guy, Mal. Oh my god, it's a cat. Oops. I got one. After catching those guys and making my way through the dungeon, we had to fight the final boss. You ready? I'm about to chuck this at him. Might not do much, but... Oh, I missed. Pain King! Get him. It's just a really big Gumas. Oh god, he just died. I didn't even get the attempt to catch it. Even though I did sadly kill the big Gumas, I got a skill fruit from one of the loot chests. And after that, I continued exploring and found another very important pal. Oh, got it. Let's go. This Tombat will be very useful later, but for right now, I got stuck in a hole. I really don't know how that happened, but that's okay because I found my first shiny or I guess lucky pal. Unfortunately, it was right next to a boss and I died. This is just unfortunate. I just kept dying. I needed to play safer. My main problem was I was always riding my Milpaka, which was nice because it did a lot of damage, but was bad because I had no way of dodging enemy attacks. And there was a lot of cool new pals and places I wanted to see. So I tried my best to get back into the groove and that's exactly what I did. Hey, we got it. I explored so much more lands and caught so many pals, which made me a lot stronger. And my ally was also finally level 9, so we fought a boss that should have been beat a long time ago. Oh, nah. Yo. Why is it always- it's only after me? Bro. Oh, that's bad. Alright, dodged it. Oh my god, he's close. I'll just- I'll dodge it, I'll dodge it. Actually, let's get the let's get the nuke. After finally completing the tutorial, I made a cooking pot and started making more ingots in order to make a saddle for a very important mount. But before that, I upgraded my base to level 11 and found an interesting pal. Wandering merchant. Oh my god. I caught him! Why was he level 1? Catching a merchant actually allows you to use him anytime at your base, which is pretty useful if you ever need to buy or sell anything quick. And while I was at it, I got to level 18 and did an R dungeon. The dungeon really didn't have anything too different from the first one, so I just mainly farmed XP. The boss was even an R big Gumas, but this time I caught it. After that, I caught my first ruby, which was nice, and I also caught a Jolt Hog Crist. It's basically just an ice version of Jolt Hog, which was cool. There's different elemental versions of pals that you already have. Also, as I was traveling, I found a random NPC named Cowardly Victim. I tried catching him, but didn't know he had backup. Wait, I'm wanted for assault. Oh shoot. All right, I didn't get that TP. Apparently there were guards that I didn't see. I played safe because the guards were six levels above me, but I just ended up escaping. Anyways, once I got back, I finally made it. How good is this? Oh. 
This seems pretty good. Nightwing made transportation so much easier and had surprisingly more stamina than I was expecting, making me able to get anywhere really high up really fast. And this guy's pretty good. There's other flying guys you could get, but for the rest of the 24 hours, I'm using Nightwing. Sadly, this does mean goodbye to Melpaka. Melpaka served me well, but this is just too good to pass up on. However, right after using Nightwing for the first time, I found the best land ball I have ever seen. Oh, land ball's glowing. Knowing. Got it. Okay, it's Lucky. Power of Gaia, too. Capture Lucky Bell. Let's see what special abilities they have. Before I checked the Lane Ball's abilities, I got level 19. And if you want to know what stats I was putting my points into, well, it's kind of hard. My face cam was blocking it. But from my memory, it was just a lot of stamina and a decent amount of weight later on and some HP. Then I finally looked at the Lucky trait and it's plus 15% attack and work speed, which is just overall really useful. Also, I love these Lucky guys because they're just really big. Anyways, this hour is a lot of catching pals for XP and crafting more pal spears. I had a near infinite amount of the basic ones because of the setup I had at my base, so farming XP by just catching low level pals was really good. Later on, I made a pal essence condenser, which is kind of like a prestige system for your pals. You just combine a pal you want with the same type of pal and they get stronger. For example, I combine one land ball with four land balls, I get the better land ball. That was something I was going to use only a little bit more later, but after that, I caught my first kelpsy. This eventually got me to level 20, and back at my residence, I got raided again and it wasn't too dangerous. They just dropped a lot of coins and other useful items, so it was honestly pretty worth. Next, I made another trip to the black market. All right, we're buying Sweepa. This guy better be worth it. Sweepa wasn't really that worth it. I used him at the base to cool stuff, but I didn't really need him, to be honest. I did catch an Arnu pal, though. What the heck? Incineram? Well, I'll catch one of them, I guess. At this point of the game, I was exploring a lot. One, because I had the resources, and two, because technology was locked behind level ups. Anyways, once I got back to the base, I made a weapon workbench, which is kind of useful, I guess. Some of these workbenches are quickly replaced by higher tier ones. And also, I did use the PAL condenser in my Jolt Hog, and the stat increases are not too great. It was noticeable, but not something that I thought was really worth going after at the time. Also, since I made a weapon workbench, I upgraded my base to level 12. Base upgrades are getting slower and slower because of how many levels I need to get. Right now, I'm level 20, but some Something required for the next base upgrade is unlocked at level 24, so that means making more spears and flying around and catching stuff. Thankfully, that's pretty fun. Well, until I die, then I get sad. I dodged. Honestly, not that hard to get your stuff back a majority of the time, unless there are hostile pals around, but after that, I just continue to explore. Also, I wanted to take the time to point out the snipe I made. Why is it on that one? Oh my god, I hit it too. Yeah, I just wanted to share that. Anyways, at this point, I was really hard to catch new pals with the normal spears. The catch rates were way too low, meaning that I needed to have a way to get more of the higher tier pal spears and quick. But for now, I just farm lower level pals and caught a pal that I had trouble with since the beginning of the game. Oh, I got it. Dino Song. Later, I hit level 22, where I can now get a new item from Dazzy, which will be very useful, and I also rescued Nara Pal. This time, it was an ice version of Mal. In Pack of the Base, I upgraded my Daydream and farmed some fiber in order to make Daisy's necklace. And combined with Daydream's item, I now can have three pals out at the same time, which I thought was really cool. After that, I went exploring and found a new field boss to beat. Oh, that's Grintail. I'm gonna start off with Jolt Hog, get my nuke in, then get Pen King in there. Pen King is doing fine. Pen King's actually just 1v1ing it right now. Okay, it just went through the rock. It went through the rock. Yes? Oh, come on. Well... I got, it got the first tick, so that was so cool. After the battle, I continued leveling and got to level 23, rescued a new rib bunny, and then got to level 24, which allowed me to make some fluffy pal beds for my base. These beds just apparently let your pals rest better, which I didn't really get, but it was required. So I tried making a couple of them, but then I got raided. Syndicate raiders. Guys, prepare, bomb. Nuke time. <laughs> Oh. Uh. None of those spears really worked, but I still found it amusing. Anyways, I continued to catch more pals, and that eventually led me back to the chill at field boss, and I decided to get one. But right after, I saw another boss that I was really interested in fighting. 
Oh, shoot. King Paka? Can I take down King Paka is the question. All right, I'm gonna get rid of those minions. All right, now he's pissed. Oh, shoot, that's my shield. Pen King, get him. Oh, all right. I don't have any weapons. I just let my guys do the work. Eventually, King Paka was defeated. Sadly, I didn't catch him, but I will later because he has a craftable saddle and riding him sounded pretty funny. Also, these bosses were dropping ancient technology parts which allowed me to craft even more egg incubators. After that, I fought another boss, Catrus. Let's enter the dungeon. Get him, Pain King. Yes, frozen. Guys, attack him. Okay. Let's go. Catris. Catris would later become a vital part of my team that I would use until the end of my challenge. Back home, I made more pal spears and an egg incubator. And after that, I fought a boss that have already given me trouble before. I'm gonna try it out. I need to get close enough so my other guys attack. Oh, come on. Thank King. Kill him. A king one shot him. Like, ah, there's not much I can do against that. In our boss lane, I tested my luck with a new pal. Oh, I might die. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Oh, come on. Just. What? Yo, he's spawn camping me. He makes spawn camps. Are you serious? I eventually did get my stuff back and even freed in our pal, but yeah, definitely wasn't easy. Afterwards, I leveled up to level 25 and continued to farm XP. And while I was doing that, I also got a new pal, Gory Rat. Oh shoot, it's another freaking Gory Rat. Watch this. Go! Jump shot! Come on. That's right. Later when I got back to base, I decided to finally initiate my metal plan. And my first step was to find an area that had a lot of metal nodes lying around. This one has three, six, eight. All right, that's perfect. This area had eight metal nodes, which was perfect for my operation. Right now, I was able to have two bases at once. So I set up another pal box and moved some materials from my old base to the new one. Plan was to have a bunch of pals and have their main purpose be mining, but they need the mining level two trait. But for right now, I had to get the basic materials for a base. So I just used pals that can do a lot of different tasks. With my prior knowledge, I was able to build this base way quicker than my last one, making my pals food sources, beds, and a bunch of other stuff. Also a while back, I said how important Tombat would be. And right now is the time. You see, this is probably the easiest pal to get or then maybe Pen King, but that guy's a cooldown that has mining level two. I had a few at my base, so I transported them over to my metal mining base. This means if I get a bunch of pals of mining level two, along with a metal chest, which is a chest that pals will automatically place items into, I can have a pretty automated metal mining source. Also, I made a primitive furnace at the new base so I can smell all the ore there. And after all that, I went out to try and find more tombats, but instead I found an Isekai guy. He was way too high level for me to try to catch, but I thought it was interesting. A random cop was in the world, and he also gave me a slice of pizza. After that, I did our dungeon, but it was pretty uneventful. I did get a bunch of lift monk effigies though while I was out, and a lot later I caught my first woolly pop, and then soon after I caught my first surfent. And with all that recent success, I decided to take on a brand new boss. Oh my god, Bushi. Oh, that guy looks cool. Oh, what the? Oh, Bushy was really cool, other than him having an instant teleport move. I had a lot of trouble dodging that one. Luckily, another player came by and we defeated it together pretty easily. Oh, we killed it. Yeah, we destroyed. After creating this new base, I was finally starting to venture into some slightly higher level areas. And that's when I caught a bunch of new guys. I got a Cognito, Nox, Loot Moon, Mazarina, and even got one of those van worms that killed me earlier. This got me to level 27 as well. Also, once I came back to my mining operation, I got raided, but this gave me the chance to get my first lease punk. And I do want to say this whole mining thing is going really well, because ingots are just being constantly made as long as I assign someone to cook them. Later that night, I went to find more tombats, and I found some, but I also found a wandering trader with some guards. 
Oh. oh. Let's go. Got a guard. Getting a guard was pretty cool, even though in use, it's not too different from a normal human. Next, I continued to make more pal spears, and with more tombats working at the mining operation, I was getting a steady supply. A bit later, while exploring, I caught my first robin quill, and this guy was pretty cool. Come on, give me it. Let's go, robin quill. After Robin Quill, I also caught a Cinemoth. Later, I made a second primitive furnace at the second base. I was really saving up ingots to make a spear assembly line, which takes 100 ingots to make. And as my metal nodes were down, I went out to explore and caught my first floppy. But yeah, it was a lot of mining. After some time, though, I did get enough ingots and finally made the assembly line. I changed the location of this to the main base later, but for now, this tool allowed me to create super high tier spears. But the main main purpose of this, though, was to finally be able to upgrade my base for the last time, all the way to level 14. The next base upgrade would require so many levels that I was nowhere close. But I did have a new goal and it was this Giga Shield. This would allow me to take a lot more hits. And the only problem was I needed more ancient technology parts. So I decided to start farming more bosses. And while I was at it, I did fail a shiny pangolet, which kind of sucked. But right after, I went to a brand new boss. And this one was a bit over my level. Level 31. I think it looks pretty cool. It's like Zeb Strika, but like a unicorn. Univolt's attacks weren't too hard to dodge, but it did take some time to kill. I was getting a lot more ancient civilization parts from these boss kills, and while doing this, I kept on catching bosses I didn't have. Oh. Okay. Nope. Come on. Oh, I'm getting attacked too. Come on, just go in. Okay, we got it. And a little later, I caught a King Paka. Oh, wait. Oh, let's go, let's go. King Paka. After catching King Paka, I can now make a saddle for him. But I had no time to do that because once I got back to my base, I was raided. Oh my god, I'm getting downed. Dude! During the raid, I died again and again. No, get away, get away. Dude! I lost all the wooden foundations I built, and everything I built on top of them was getting burnt to a crisp. Bro, my whole base. The raiders eventually left, but all my pals were incapacitated, and I had a whole base to rebuild. Luckily, the chests weren't destroyed, but I had a lot of items to pick up. I decided to rebuild the whole base with stone to prevent this from ever happening again. The raiders were much higher level than me, so I needed somewhere safe to stay while my pals did all the work. But really, the worst part of all of this was the egg incubators. They all got destroyed, resetting all of their progress on hatching eggs. I will eventually get one hatch in this video, but it really sucks losing all that progress. But while constructing the base again, I was gathering more ingots and finally crafted a production assembly line. It looks grand, but it's really not too different than a normal workbench. I will use it a lot later though for gunpowder and ammo. Also, I finally made new metal armor at the base, which was a well-needed upgrade. And soon after, I got raided again, and this time I was actually protected. I finally was starting to feel safe at my base and I continued to expand it, creating a whole other section and moving a bunch of different structures around. And once I was finished, I decided to fight some more bosses and this one is one of my favorites. Come on, 20. Let's go. Let's go. Patalia. Thankfully, I had Giga Spears to catch Patalia, and I used her a bit later in some battles because she was pretty strong and also has an ability that can heal me on command. But after that, I continued to explore, getting a bunch of Lift Monk Evigies and some TPs that are really far away, which got the map unlocked a bit more. And I also got a really cool bird named Hell Zephyr. Okay. Let's go. The only thing is, I have to be a lot higher level in order to have a saddle for it. I then caught a Godfin, which was pretty easy, but then a whole swarm appeared and I died. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Oh, yo, so many. But right after, I traveled to another boss, War Sect. Yo, that guy looks crazy. Okay, that broke my shield. I did cheese him for a little bit, but got so bored that I decided to free him. Oh, tick. Oh, let's go. 
Four sacked. The chances of me catching him were so low, but I'm glad I did. This guy was really cool and honestly really strong. After the fight, I did a bunch of stuff, but I did find a lucky loot moon. A level 40 lucky loop moon? Oh, dude, I can't get that. And I was so far out that I decided against it. A little later, though, that didn't matter, and I encountered a new pal. Oh, shoot, there's many members of the B-Guard. Oh, what the? What the? What the? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. Good thing I have my shield still. I actually just got Sui bombed. I entered that so bad. I just, I wanted to go heal. I wanted to heal. Yeah, it was really dangerous and I died so far away and it took a while to get back. Oh, shoot. No, 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 no. Nope. Oh, come on. Oh my God. Oh, yo, yo, yo. I should have just flew away. I should have just flew away. Yeah, I kept dying. And worst of all, I didn't have another Nightwing to take me back, so I used my trusty Melpaka. I eventually did get my stuff back, and at this point when flying around, I realized how huge this map is, and thought how little I've actually done. There were so many things left to do, and I only had three hours left. But I still had to keep going, so I just put that to the side for now, and focused on other tasks. That's until I saw it. Let's try taking on the Mamors. I did not mean to hit with that. That was a bad start. This thing's level 28 or 38. This was an obstacle put in front of me since the start of the 24 hours. Something that I wanted to catch. I was going to prove myself it would be by catching this grass mammo swine. What's bro doing? Have we cheesed the boss? Yeah, I did find it, couldn't cross this water, but that wasn't how I wanted to play. You gotta be kidding me, what was that range? I got it so low and that was a whole 15 minutes. But I took my defeat and decided I wasn't ready for now. So instead I took the time to level up. But it didn't take too long before I got bored and decided to experiment. And then... Oh my goodness. Wait, King Lee, oh he has the slam attack. We gotta test it out. Oh my god. Just for a test. Hey, Mamorist. How, uh, how will this feel? That did 14 damage. Sadly, King Paco was a bit slow, but I did have another experiment I wanted to try. Merchant, do you do damage? Bro doesn't even... Bro does no damage. I think he does one. Bro does negative damage. Also, when I came back to the base, I upgraded Catrice using some palsels, and I also made a Sweepa saddle. Let's take a look at this. Oh my gosh. Yo, Sweepa, can you go any faster? Yeah, Sweepa was slow as well. So I stuck to Nightwing, and after some time, I achieved level 29. And a little later, I found a goal that would make me feel like I've achieved something in this 24 hours, and that was getting a gun. You see, the whole Pokemon with guns thing didn't really work for me so far. I just let my pals do all the work because they just do so much more damage. But now that I can make guns, I wanted to try it out. But in order to get gunpowder for ammo, I needed charcoal and sulfur. Charcoal was easy, you just smelt wood. But sulfur was way harder. Since I had no idea where to get it, I looked it up and it said in the starting dungeons it was found. But I couldn't find any. So I ventured further into the map and finally got some. It was just in a random region and it finally allowed me to make some gunpowder. And while this was happening, I was always just getting more ingots, which allowed me to craft my first gun. And after crafting ammo, I had a challenge for this final hour. And that was to defeat or catch every field boss I can see, starting with a brand new boss. Oh yeah, let's try it. Oh my god, Warsack's taking him up. 12% chance, this is it. One, oh, it ticked. No. Oh. After the first boss, I learned I needed way better spears because the rates were so low. And also, my gun didn't do that much damage, but it was useful for lowering the boss. So, right after, I made a bunch of mega and hyper spears, which would help me catch just about anything. Well, actually, I can just get really unlucky as well. 
Oh no. Come on. If I get hit, I'm dead. Come on. I'm using all my hyper spears. Come on. It's at 13 HP. Yeah, the last two bosses were a bit hard to catch, but that didn't stop me from going for other ones. 49% chance, I'll take that. Oh, let's go. Oh, bushy. Alright, 76% chance. Let's go. And with all that, I hit 24 hours. But I still felt like I didn't accomplish what I wanted to. Even after defeating all those bosses and with a brand new gun, I was filled with these feelings of inadequacy. Yeah, I was on hard mode, but others have already beaten the game. So with that thought in my head, I decided I wasn't done and that there was still one more boss that needed to be slain. Since the start of this challenge, I had one pal constantly taunting me. Oh my God, man, Morris, level 35? And after trying before and not defeating it, I knew that I couldn't let this stone stay unturned. Bro doesn't know how to cross a bridge. Bro doesn't know how to cross a bridge. It's all, it's all out. It's a dude. It's a war right now. All right, ten percent chance. Come on. Nope. Come on. Oh, take once. We got it. We forest. Dude. Let's go. So yeah, that was my first 24-ish hours in Power World. And if you made it here, you might as well subscribe. I really hope you enjoyed. And if you really want to see more of me, maybe take a chance at the random video in the middle of the screen. All right, later. Morris, you really need to figure out this whole bridge thing.